understand at the pivotal moment in human history. Our future is at the crossroads. The climate crisis, as you have heard, is no longer a distant threat. It's the present reality reshaping our world before our very eyes. Devastating floods, deadly infections, and unprecedented heat waves. These are the new normal cascading across nations, disrupting lives, economies, and ecosystems. In just one lifetime, two million lives have been snuffed out only by extreme weather events. The estimated economic loss of these disasters is more than the cumulative annual output of 1.4 billion Indians. By 2050, when my son reaches the age I am now, climate change could reap 14.5 million additional lives and displace 1.2 billion people, creating a refugee out of every eighth person in this world. The scale of this crisis is unlike anything we have ever faced, and the stakes couldn't be higher. Therefore, the question that we must ask ourselves today is, do we have an immediate solution? The answer is both yes and no. Yes, because theoretically, if we could slam the brakes on all 40 billion metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions overnight, we could have turned the tide on some of the catastrophic trends. And no, because that's a pipe dream. You know, our lives are tethered to these greenhouse gas emissions. Every meal cooked, every mile driven, every flick of the thermostat contributes to greenhouse gases and binds us to this reality. But today, I'm not here to dwell on this problem. I stand before you to illuminate a path forward. You know, I'm a big fan of science fiction. I love watching movies like The Terminator, Krish, and so on. Now, you know The Terminator, right? A cyborg assassin was sent back in time from the future by machines to kill Sarah Connor, a woman who was destined to give birth to a man who would eventually save humanity from extinction. And the human resistance who are fighting the machines in future, sent a sergeant, Kyle Rees, to protect Sarah Connor from the Terminator. In the movie, Chris, many of you have seen the superhero's father built a supercomputer that allowed him to foresee the malintentions of Dr. Siddhant Arya. Now, these two movies are from different countries, but one thing is very common in these two movies. The information about future, what we call foresight, was used to protect and the world and prevent the catastrophe. Now, imagine a world where humans could foresee. What if we could foresee the epidemics and pandemics years before they emerge? What if we could foresee the impact of rising sea levels and redesign our coastal cities before they are underwater? What if we could foresee the migration patterns due to climate change and build infrastructure and create jobs for the displaced in places where they are likely to settle? What if we could foresee the next major drought, flood, or cyclone, and preemptively arrange 
food supplies, medical supplies, and safe water for millions of people. We could have changed the fate of humanity and the future of this planet. Does this sound too filmy? But you know, these are not movie ideas anymore. With artificial intelligence, humans can now foresee. AI is not just another hammer to drive a nail. It's a pulse of our collective consciousness, a sentinel that sifts through the sands of information, foresees the tempests on the horizon, and allows us to find the lifeboat long before the tsunami strikes. This is a digital twin system that the Mohammed bin Zayed University of Artificial Intelligence, the Artificial Intelligence Industry Association of Indonesia, and the Center of Excellence that I lead today, IMAX, together with support from the Reaching the Last Mile, we launched at the 28th UN Conference of Parties for Climate Change in Dubai last year. Now, this is an autonomous intelligent system that doesn't just predict the future, it brings it to life. It allows you to watch the unfolding realities of diseases and weather as if you are seeing tomorrow's world today. It's the future rendered in real time using artificial intelligence that has the potential to reshape how nations can respond to the climate crisis. This is the potential of artificial intelligence that we have today, and we are on the cusp of a revolution that will not just change the game, but will rewrite the entire playbook. Now, skeptics might argue that the seeds of AI were sown in 1950s. So what was stopping us in the past to develop such a system? And what will it take to build a system like this now? Now, as an AI scientist, you know, I believe artificial intelligence needs three things. Data, computing capacity, and most importantly, purpose. The reason we couldn't build such a system back then, and the reason we have the opportunity to develop a system like this now, is because we live in a world defined by three powerful forces, information, communication, and technology. These forces allow us to generate and interpret zettabytes of data, a scale so vast that if a megabyte, an MB, is a single book of 400 pages, a zettabyte would be a stack of those books stretching from Earth to Pluto and back with rooms to spare. And our computing capacities have grown so large that we can search and query that data in fragments of seconds. To put that into perspective, imagine a world where every person on this earth has one calcula calculator, that means eight billion calculators, and each one of them are performing one calculation per second, nonstop, day and night, for over 15,000 years, and we could barely match the computing capacity of all the GPUs and TPUs that the world has together. That's the magnitude of the computing capacity that we have today. In our system, four million data points are processed under 17 seconds. Therefore, when I see individuals gathering perspective from social media reels about AI, that AI will help you write better emails or create better presentations, I just feel that you are missing the forest for the trees. Over the next decade, I envision AI 
disrupting the way we plan for different economic sectors, health, agriculture, water, among others. Defying the very principle of scarcity, the very principle of Pareto. Autonomous intelligent systems can create a sustainable world of abundance. And at the outset of this climate crisis, that's the purpose we can provide to artificial intelligence. At the heart of this purpose lies a shared responsibility. One that transcends the traditional boundaries, shatters old paradigms, and demands radical action by everyone. Therefore, technology corporations, I urge you to think beyond your next product cycles and focus on the legacy of our work. What will be said about us 50 years from now? Will we be remembered as the generation who unlocked a technology that changed the world for good? Or will we be another chapter in the long book of missed opportunities. It's time we innovate solutions that can create circular economies, reduce waste, accelerate renewable energy production, improve public health services, predict diseases and disasters, and protect humanity from climate change. Governments across the world these solutions, as I said earlier, need two things, data and computing capacity. The earlier you create bold data sharing policies across economic sectors to harmonize climate, health, population, land use, land cover data, the faster you create ICT infrastructure and localized managed services, the safer you build your data transaction channels, the wider you expand your internet, the sharper your climate foresight would be, which will eventually help you build a climate resilient nation. Nonprofits and NGOs, the era for blanket solutions are over. It's time to focus on climate vulnerable communities and to identify them precisely. We need tools like or technologies like artificial intelligence. And finally, everyone in this room, you are not bystanders. Everyone listening today, you are not bystanders. You are the catalyst of change. You need to advocate in your workplaces, communities, and service domains to harness the power of AI to address the most pressing consequences of climate change. This is our moment to disrupt. The technology is in our hand. We just need to give it the very purpose. We can be mere spectators of this unfolding reality but our children are watching and history will remember. Let us ensure that it remembers us as the legends who dared to change the world, turn 14.5 million lives from loss to hope and 1.2 billion futures from despair to resilience. Can we do that? I'll leave you with that question today. Thank you.